sell out crowds and archery never seem to go together. That's until the Olympics brought the sport to El Dorado Park in Long Beach this week. There's the challenge for the competitors to hit the bullseye and the challenge for the spectators to follow along. The male and female competitors must maintain strict mental discipline as they battle wind and gravity a total of 288 times from four different distances. They've practiced long and hard to ensure consistency, which is the key. Yet practice doesn't always make perfect. The Olympic history of the sport takes us back 80 years, and they were years of change. Technology has been added to the formula for success, but the beauty of a bullseye must still come from the eye of the bow holder. Nestled in among the colorful collection of archers from 39 countries is 1976 USA Olympic gold medalist Darrell Pace. When Darrell pins the string to his nose, a very exceptional talent is on display. And eight years after his championship, he is after gold again. And here he explains what he'll use to go after it. The bows we use in competition nowadays are very simple, but yet still complicated. We have a sight, which is movable for your elevation. The sight pin, which is what we aim with. And there's no magnification to the sight. There's no level for leveling the bow. The stabilizers actually control the bow movement so that it can give an arrow a truer flight. And they're also shock absorbed to take the shock out of the initial shock of the arrow. The arrows we use are the newest, latest, very lightweight aluminum carbon graphite, which makes the arrow fly faster and has less time for the arrow to actually drift in the wind. And for those of you who would like to buy something like this, the bow goes for about $600 in any pro shop, and the arrows go for about $18 a piece. There are those who feel Daryl's temperament is all wrong, and they wonder how he's found success in a sport that demands mental stability. You may judge for yourself as we take you to Ohio to view Daryl up close and personal. Daryl Pace hunts deer with as much concentration and skill as he hits bullseyes. What gives you the patience to sit in a tree and wait for deer is, a, is the same thing that makes you want to compete at a high level. And it's strictly dedication and the drive. The same with any, anything in, in life is, if you don't give it your fullest, it won't turn out good. Pace's home away from home, where he spends most of his time, is his father-in-law's farm in southern Ohio. There, the radio technician messes around dangerously on a tower, practicing his hobby and his trade. One thing that I think about is death. I know that if I do one thing wrong, you know, that's it. That's why I'll keep telling myself several times, unsafe, 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 and I'll say that 50 times in, in a matter of a few seconds. If you want to, you can. If you think you can, go ahead. If Bob not, Douglas, uh, we'll Pace's father-in-law, shares Darrell's passion for electronics. When the Paces are on the road, they keep in touch constantly by ham radio with the Douglases, who have a full layout in the basement of the farmhouse. The families are extraordinarily close. I always joke about the fact that, you know, everyone says, oh, no, the in-laws, but the in-laws I have are just totally the opposite. They make me feel at home and uh, always have. I always said the worst thing I ever did was introduce Daryl to my father. Because of the radio. <laughs> no, it's uh, Daryl and I'm getting along really, really good, which is good, but... To an extent. To an extent, yes. <laughs> Beth works all day in a beauty shop, helps Daryl with the farm chores when she gets home. Last year, when he was thinking about retiring from competition, she chopped that idea right down. I just said, no, you're not going to quit. We're going to do this together, and you're going to do the best you can, and I'm going to be right there kicking you, so I wouldn't let him. So he hung in there. Now he's doing more than just shooting it up with his friends. For the second time, Daryl Pace is going for the gold. And so on this sunny California afternoon, the final mind-testing three-hour session was underway. This would wrap up four full days of competition. As the arrows were fired in a machine gun frequency, you could see some competitors watching Daryl Pace, as Daryl Pace kept an eye on himself. 
Enter Richard McKinney, Pace's top challenger, also of the U.S. It's felt that his calm demeanor is more suited to a gold medal archer, yet he is equally finicky about his work. McKinney didn't pay much attention to Daryl, but we did. His method never changes. The sequence of events, always the same. Hundreds of thousands of those touches to the nose and piercing looks of the eye have refined his motion to the highest level. When the last arrow had been shot, Darrell led the way. His total of 2,616 would give him a gold medal to go with the one from Montreal. While Richard McKinney had a silver medal performance, barely beating out Hiroshi Yamamoto of Japan by one point on his last arrow. Yamamoto settled for the bronze. The United States has always done well in this sport, and Darrell Pace was maintaining the tradition. As a matter of fact, in the Olympic Games, there isn't a national anthem that has followed archery more frequently than this one. silver for the calm of Rich McKinney. Those glasses of Darrell's sharpen his aim, and they shield from the sun. But look closely, because they cannot hide the joy of victory in El Dorado Park.